What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the fourth beta of macOS Tahoe 26.1 to developers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new inside the software. We got something to talk about, let's get started. Alright, for me, all my M4 Mac Mini and M4 Mac Air came in at 3.37 gigabytes, and the reason why it comes in this much size is because we got a major feature that a lot of people have been asking for. Personally, me, I have not been asking for this feature. I've been asking Apple to do the reverse and make it more buffed, and it is that if you were to go inside of settings and then go to appearance, you now have an option to choose liquid glass, so you could choose clear or tinted. So basically what this does is that clear is basically what it was inside of the previous beta, and then tinted is what it is going to be if you choose it. So basically this is what it was in, I believe, beta 3, where all the buttons are just black. So here's a quick example of what liquid glass looks like inside of macOS Tahoe, the previous beta, and what it basically looks like inside of the latest beta. So this is what liquid glass looks like with the clear mode. This is what it looks like in tinted mode, basically. So basically what all this does is that it just removes the liquid glass, basically. Now, there is still a little bit of a translucency effect if I were to just do an image real quick. So here's a quick example of what liquid glass looks like with the normal version and what it looks like with the tinted version. So basically what the normal version does is that it still has like a translucency effect. If we were to make it smaller, you could definitely see more of the liquid glass effect. On macOS, it's like a little bit more nerfed compared to iOS, but on a tinted version, this is what it would look like. It basically just makes it a black button. And then if you were to have light mode, it basically just make this a white button. So let me get the light mode version here real quick. All right, so here's basically the regular version, dark mode, and light mode. So basically it just removes liquid glass. I mean, there's still a little bit of a morphing effect as you could just kind of faintly see in here. But this is basically what Tinted does inside of macOS now. And this will just apply it system wide, just not in this little example app that I made right here. Alright, the next feature has to do with the Apps app. And if you were to open up the Apps app, you're going to see you got an additional row of apps inside of here. So before you would just have six apps, now you have seven apps. So here are all the apps that you could open up right here. And you can't rearrange anything right now. You can't make your own grouping or anything like that. You could only use the default groups up here, just like inside the app library instead of iOS. Now, we still don't have Launchpad back, but I'm going to tell you some something that could either be good or bad news. Apple's taking down all the Launchpad clone apps on the App Store because they look too much like Launchpad even though it doesn't exist anymore. So could Apple be bringing back Launchpad or at least a full screen version of the apps app? We'll have to wait and see about that, but maybe macOS 26.2 or 26.4, that will be coming back. Now I can't say for sure, but maybe we will get that pretty soon. Now, now, in the previous beta, I forgot to go over that you can resize the apps app. It's, like, very hard to do for some reason. It's almost like you're not supposed to, but if you were to get it exactly like that, you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want going vertically. So this is as big as you can get it. If it were to move the apps app up here, for example, then you have a vertical launch pad, basically. Yeah, so basically this is the best way to get the apps app how you would like it. If you prefer a full screen view like Launchpad was, but that's how you're able. Right here we got our Geeka and score, and we can see we got a 3849 on the single core and a 15474 on the multi core. Comparing it to beta 3, we can see right here that we got a 3790 on the single core and a 15336 on the multi core. Now this version is definitely a lot lower, but our current highest is actually beta 2. We got a 3819 on the single core compared to 3849, and a 15474 on the multi core compared to 15474. So multi core scores tied, and our single core is higher than the previous version. This goes to show that our performance here should be a little bit better. Now this does not tell from day to day. This just tells us that if it, there's a major drop, then you should skip this beta. But this is showing that performance here has improved a little bit. All right. What is next for Apple? I'm going to pull up my widgets right here. All right, so today is October 20th, 2025. And the next thing that we're probably going to get is the RC version of macOS Tahoe 26.1. And I expect that here on the 27th. And then after that, we're going to get the final release. And I expect that here on November 3rd. Now, Apple typically likes their Monday releases, and then we'll get the, and then we'll get 26.2 on the 4th. And that's how everything will go. 
Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That's when we can expect everything to release here. Anyways, thanks for watching. Come on, like and subscribe. Download apps in the description down below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!